So something that you definitely have a wealth of experience in is uh, being a woman and sometimes the first and only woman on a lot of these very old historical institutions. Uh, I believe you're currently the only female judge, including third party arbitrators on the USRN Claims Tribunal. If, is yes. that right? Yeah, the ICJ uh, as well as overwhelmingly male, the ICC skews male as well. Um, Although the ICJ has more than one woman on it. Yes, yes. Um, it's still overwhelmingly male. Um, I think the ICC is a little bit less so. Uh, why do you think this is? Uh, how should we think about this disparity? And do you think it affects the outcomes at all? I, you know, that's really hard. I, 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 I've seen throughout the years, uh, I've seen several law review articles which try or that try to uh, evaluate decisions based on the composition of the court, whether women made the decision or whether women were on the panel and so forth. And I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, there is some empirical evidence in a different context. Uh, somebody sent me a, it wasn't a cartoon, but a poster. <laughs> you know which one, what I'm going to say. No, a poster of the highest number of country, the highest number of COVID infections yeah. and deaths yeah. in 10, eight countries or something, and then the lowest. And of course, in the highest, they had pictures of all the heads of, of those states. <laughs> yep. And of the lowest, and they were all women. Yes, uh, I think it's it me to be empirical yeah. evidence of some sort. Yeah, yeah, it's New Zealand, um, is it Finland? Yes, yeah. all, all the countries with female heads of state seem to be doing uh, abnormally or extraordinarily well during this COVID, yes. COVID <laughs> phenomenon. Because I think, and I, well, I don't know. I mean, you know, we express these opinions and I'm not so <laughs> sure how valid any of them are from anybody, but I, it does seem to me that women are much more open to hearing uh, perspectives and views. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they are not so ready to say, I know it all, not, at least not all of them. And mm -hmm. let me insert a cautionary note here about diversity. I think gender, racial, and ethnic representation on courts, on boards, uh, um, are, is, is extremely important because of its impact on inclusiveness, right. on an understanding that we are all part of the same world and need to have, um, rep have our group, whatever it is, represented as part of the whole. Mm -hmm. but, but having said that, the, the more important thing for me in terms of diversity on courts is diversity of viewpoint. That's what's important. And sometimes you can have diversity of gender and have absolutely no diversity of viewpoint. And I'm very much against that because the value on an appellate court, for example, <laughs> you have more than one viewpoint. And if you're going to have 10 members or three members or eight members, all who think exactly alike, why not save the money and just have one judge be the appellate person? Right. I mean, so, the, the the thing that one has to examine is not just the gender and racial and ethnic and every other kind of, of mm -hmm. diversity, but whether or not there is diversity of thought that is going to be enhanced in a particular institution. That seems uh, particularly relevant now. And I think there's a lot of business school research to this point that says basically diversity of viewpoint, in addition to all the other more intrinsic types of diversity, lead to better decision making because it overcomes a lot of decisional biases. Yeah. Speaking of a, of a silly example, but I, I was in a, in a court conference about a case uh, when I was on the 11th Circuit and um, one of the judges was saying that this man had just sold his property and he was going back to the Bahamas and he had like $100,000 in his pocket. And the whole question was, why did he have $100,000 in his pocket? It must be because it came from drugs or it was illegal or something. <laughs> and, and he was expressing the view that, uh, that a, a, 
a normal person, a non-criminal person would have put it in the bank. And I said, wait a minute, my father never had a, a bank account himself. He kept money, in fact, we searched all over the house for it because we knew it was there somewhere, yeah. his cash. And uh, he, he didn't, uh, you know, he didn't really trust institutions. And well, first of all, he couldn't speak English himself very well. So we, although he did interact with people, um, but, but it, it, they all like, oh, really? I said, yes. He had tons of money. He didn't keep it in a bank. He kept it at home somewhere. And that doesn't mean that he was a criminal. And so, I mean, it's, it, it's a little example, but it's kind of makes the point. Can you think of a time in your like that in your career where you were hyper aware of some things? I was going to say uh, when you were hyper aware that you were a woman, uh, but it sounds like there might be other situations where you were made more aware that you were the only minority in the room. Um, do you have any advice for how uh, young women now to starting a career today should navigate those situations? I think you have. I don't know, I think you have to be patient. And there are so many degrees of, of uh, discrimination that, mm -hmm. that people suffer racially and gender and in other ways. I, I, and a lot of times you may not, you yourself might not be aware that you're being discriminated against. If you don't get a job and they just say you don't get the job, you can't always tell whether it has to do with your gender, your race, or, or your personality, which might be that of someone who talks too much like I'm doing right now. But um, so I, I, I um, so there is that direct discrimination, like, no, you can't have this job because you're a woman, the, the, the kind that Ruth Ginsburg uh, uh, suffered through, for example. There is also, a, a, a lesser kind of more subtle discrimination. It's, it's, a, it's a dismissiveness kind of, and I have noticed that a lot throughout my life. You're in a group, you express a view, which you think is very sensible, coherent, smart, clever, and so forth, and everybody sort of nods. Mm -hmm. And then two speakers later, one of the men in the room express exactly the same view. I see that you're nodding, so you know what I'm going to say. And then all of a sudden, everybody like, that is really brilliant. So I, I and that is something that I don't think people, they see. And I don't really know how to suggest that you just, you know, other than to talk about it sometimes like this. But, but sometimes women, no matter how brilliant, no matter how whatever, aren't just not listened to quite in the same way or, or given the same uh, acknowledgement as it were. So there's a whole range. I, I think I've been very lucky in not experiencing very direct discrimination because of being a, a woman or, 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 or a minority. Um, and, and I've been lucky in the groups of people that I've been part of. Um, for the most part, they're very generous, sweet people, or at least I saw them that way. Uh, the, the members of the courts that I've served on. Um, so so if, if there is discrimination, it, it happened to me in a much more subtle and unaware way than, than, in, than in a direct way, which is not to say that many, many women and, and uh, other and, and, and racial minorities or any other kind of minorities don't experience it in a much more direct way, which we have to address.